this oh, one right here. Mm -hmm. He's going to reap that and he'll make a motion oh, yeah. to take it off the table. Mm -hmm. And then we vote on that. But then somebody will have to turn around and make a motion to vote on it. Okay. After it's untapable. After untapable. Okay. Okay, if you Council regular session will come to order. The staff opening prayer and pledge, please. Yep. Our Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this rain that you have given us, Lord, that we need. And Father, we just thank you for this day that you have allowed us to have. And what a privilege it is, Lord, to be here and to represent our people and our districts, Father. And may we always be mindful, Lord, to be the voice, the ears, and the heart of those that have allowed us to serve. We thank you, Father, for each and every day that you have given us, Lord. We thank you for all the wonderful blessings that you have bestowed upon our great nation. And we ask, Lord, to lift up those that are sick, those that are hurting, Lord, those that are lonely, Father. We just lift them up to you and ask us to always be mindful of those. And Lord, just be with us as we go about our business today. And guide us and lead us, Lord, as we ask for your wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, with one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Approval of the minutes, regular session, July 10th, 2021. Your motion for approval. Thank you. Somebody in second questions, comments? Oh. We did roll call. We did roll call. We did roll call. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Roll call. Thomas Williston. Here. Tony Ward. Here. Eddie Bohannon. Here. Delton Cox. Here. Ron Perry. Here. Jennifer Woods. Here. Jack Austin. Here. Perry Thompson. 
James Dry. Here. Anthony Dillard. Here. Robert Carr. Here. James Frazier. Here. Now approval minutes. Regular session July 10, 2021. Here a motion for approval. We do that. Big motion. Second. Motion made and second. Questions, comments? Oh. Speaker Williston? Yes. Tony Ward? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Yes. Delton Cox? Yes. Ron Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Perry Thompson? Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. Thanks, Frazier? Yes. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody to today's session. Um, actually, it's a beautiful day outside, getting a little bit of rain, not so hot, but always glad to see you. And uh, as always, at, uh, every month we recognize a veteran from each district, or from, uh, from a district, to thank them for the service that they've given and uh, the sacrifices that they made. And if we all think about the sacrifices, and one being is that they helped give us the opportunity to, to gather. So with that, uh, this month's veteran of the month is Mr. Jack Hayes from District 11. Is he present? Yes. Mr. Hayes, would you come forward, please? Yeah. Like the speaker said, we'd like to uh, honor our veterans in the Choctaw Nation. And this month, the Veteran of the Month of the Choctaw Nation from District 11, uh, Jack Hayden is not only an honorable veteran, but uh, he's very active in the uh, McAllister Community Center Senior Group. He's a Choctaw artist that does beat work wood carving and paintings. Uh, Jack, when he got out of service, he was a McAllister fire department, uh, firefighter. During a fire uh, back in the 70s, it was one of the worst fires we'd had, a five-story brick building uh, they were fighting. Uh, it collapsed that day and actually it killed one of our Choctaw tribal members, Zappy Off. Zappy. And Jack lost a leg during that uh, uh, building collapsing. And after he recovered, he spent uh, 21 years at the McAllister Army Ammunition Plant as an employee there. So uh, Jack is well deserved of this uh, citation today, and I'd like to read it right fast. Let's see. Whereas Jack Haynes is a resident of District 11 and a proud member of the Choctaw Nation, he, he served in the United States Navy from June 1969 to May 1971, where he achieved the rank of E-4, third class petty officer. Whereas Petty Officer Haynes was stationed aboard the USS Midway CBA-41 aircraft carrier and worked on the extensive monitorization of the carrier at the Naval Shipyard, from which it was recommissioned on January 31, 1970. Whereas the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma holds our veterans in the highest esteem and appreciates the sacrifices and contributions they have made to, pres to preserve our freedoms and the way of life we hold dear. Whereas the Tribal Council of the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma takes great pride in honoring Jack Haynes as Veteran of the Month. Now, therefore, pursuant to the motion of Chief Gary Batten, the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma extends to Jack Haynes sincere commendations and directs that this citation be presented. Ma'am, ma'am, if she'd like to step around, she can take a picture. I mean, I don't think it's a problem. <laughs> Yes. 
thank you, Mr. Hayes, for your service, as well as all the veterans that past and present, and the uh, servicemen and women today that are protecting our freedom. Thank you very much. Public comments. Mr. Wayne Cotton, is he present? Okay, do I hear a motion to allow Mr. Cotton to I'll speak? Make, I'll make that motion, Mr. Speaker. Second. 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 Motion made. Second. Yes. Vote. Speaker Williston. Yes. Tony Ward. Yes. Eddie Bohannon. Yes. Elton Cox. Yes. Ron Perry. Yes. Jennifer Woods. Yes. Jack Austin. Yes. Perry Thompson. Yes. James Dry. Yes. Anthony Dillard. Yes. Robert Carr. Yes. James Frazier. Yes. Mr. Cotton, would you come forward, please? Mr. Cotton, you have three minutes to address the council. Uh, our recording secretary will advise you to begin, and she will advise you when you have 30 seconds left. May I remove my mask while I address you? Sure. Yes. Thank you. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and Choctaw Tribal Council for the foresight in envision uh, and to fund uh, our Choctaw Medical System. <laughs> Uh, my wife and I are patients at the Durant Medical Center, uh, and our primary care physician is Dr. Ian Kirkpatrick of the Healthy Aging Clinic. Uh, he was always pleasant, seemed generally, he seems generally happy to see us. He takes the time necessary to answer questions fully and explains diagnosis and treatment options in terms that are easy to understand. We're truly partners with him in our medical care. We also have received services in urgent care, walk-in clinic, the optometry, podiatry, laboratory, radiology, and pharmacy. The staff in these clinics are also knowledgeable and provide the great customer service and always with a smile. We have, <clears throat> we have often requested uh, copies of our medical records, particularly lab work and radiology for our civilian doctors. Uh, Tina Chalk in medical records is always pleasant, hopefully, and has the records ready and for picked up very quickly. The, uh, she's also so knowledgeable about what the civilian doctors need. We've never had them ask for any additional tests over what the shop calls are provided. Uh, the Poto Refill Pharmacy has continuously improved since 1998. I take several medications, which would be very costly uh, with private Medigap insurance. The prescription coverage from the Choctaw Nation is a tremendous benefit to me personally. Now it's very easy to refill the scripts for delivery to the U.S. mail, and that's the method that I prefer to use now. Our children and grandchildren live in Texas. We have encouraged them to register at the clinic so they can have an active chart. Uh, two of our granddaughters have sought care there while they were visiting in previous summers. Uh, in last year, our son brought his daughter here from Houston area to get an MRI. Because the local cost is very high and his deductible is $7,000 before any insurance starts. <clears throat> he made an appointment to have the clinic doctor evaluate her knee and order the MRI, knowing that, <clears throat> and knowing that he probably would have to make a return trip. The clinic physician and the radiology department worked with him and they managed to get his MRI done the next day. So he was able to make it all in one trip and take it back to Houston to the doctor who commented, and he had a very picky orthopedic surgeon, he commented that... <clears throat> 30 seconds. Thank you. Uh, he, uh, uh, he commented he liked the, the test results very much. Uh, the COVID-19 vaccinations were done very effectively, and we we're pleased that Choctaw Nation opened those up to uh, the general public. Uh, I've got a brother that's been diagnosed in February with lung cancer, and the Choctaw Nation has provided nothing but loving care uh, to help him through this, uh, it looks like he'll have one lung removed. So, uh, and he wouldn't have been able to do that and survive without the Chalk Nation. Time. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Cotton. Thank you. Mr. Cotton. Thank you. Faith Parra. Uh, I hear a motion to allow Ms. Parra to address council. Make that motion. Second. Motion made, seconded. Vote. Speaker Williston? Yes. Tony Ward? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Yes. Delton Cox? Yes. Ron Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Perry Thompson? 
Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. Thanks, Frazier. Yes. Ms. Parra, would you, is she here? Okay. Ms. Mm -hmm. Parra, approach the podium, please. Three minutes to address council. I'm recording secretary to be timekeeper. She will advise you when to start, and she will advise you when you have 30 seconds left. So we'll begin at your leisure. You ready? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Felito, thank you so much for having me here today. My topic is serving and protecting our Choctaw citizens, which I know that each and every one of you want to do. On May 20th, 2021, we are assured that Choctaw Nation received the first payment of $944,425,951 from the American Rescue Plan Act. This amount is over four times the amount that we got last year, which was roughly about $200 million. And I understand in August, which is this month, the U.S. Treasury will communicate to the tribal governments the amount of their portion of the employment allocation with the anticipated date of the second payment. As our legislators, you know more than I do about the money. But we do know that tribal governments have broad flexibility to decide how to use this funding that is best to meet the needs of their tribal communities, of tribal citizens like me. You know, the Treasury's interim final rule ident identifies other ineligible uses, which I'm going to skip, And we, but we are a sovereign nation, and we can say how we want to use it. While this program offers broad flexibility to recipients to address local conditions, these rest restrictions are essential to help ensure that funds are being used to augment existing activities and address pressing, pressing needs. However, direct cash disbursements are allowed. According to the FAQs of the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery, the question was, may recipients use funds to respond to the public health emergency and its negative economic impacts by providing direct cash transfers? And the answer was yes. Now, I know you already know all these things, and we are aware that many tribes in Oklahoma have pa passed legislative resolutions by their councilmen authorizing distribution of direct payment assistance to their tribal citizens, and many are in the process of distributing these payments. For example, the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians are giving $3,000 per tribal citizen. The Cherokee Nation here in Oklahoma gave $2,000 to all registered citizens, and I'm going to skip. During last month's tribal council meeting, I heard that over 75% of the ARPA money would go to tribal members. If we do the numbers, which I'm sure you already have, we could give at least 2000 to every Choctaw tribal citizen, and those are we could go towards needs that they have. One of the things that you are aware of is, you know, just recently in... <coughs> District 2, we've had several, several funerals. Sorry. So thank you. I'd like you to read this. I'm sorry that was, I didn't talk fast enough. <laughs> but uh, please protect and serve our Choctaw citizens by distributing the money that they need now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Parra. <laughs> Next up is Nellie Machine to have you here a motion. <laughs> Allow Ms. Nellie Machine Tubby to address council. I'll make the motion. Second. Motion made and seconded. Oh. Speaker Williston. Abstain. Tony Ward? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Yes. Delton Cox? Yes. Ron Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Perry Thompson? Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. James Frazier? Yes. Ms. Machanta, would you approach the podium, please? Yes. You have three minutes to address council. Uh, recording secretary will advise you when to start, and she will advise you when you have 30 seconds left. You ready? 
committee. Go. Meeting the needs of the Choctaw tribal citizens. Hello, I would like to share some thoughts with you regarding several issues that affect our Choctaw citizens here in Oklahoma. First, I would like to thank the Choctaw Nation for building the Choctaw Cultural Center and the Casino Expansion. Both will benefit the tribe. Yoko Key. When I see these expensive structures and the ongoing housing construction, I am proud that the Choctaw Nation is able to finance these buildings, it costing millions of dollars debt free. But it also makes me wonder when I look around our reservation, why are our recognizable Choctaw citizens who live here in the Choctaw Nation not appear to be benefiting to the some extent? This May, the Choctaw Nation received COVID funds through the American Rescue Plan Act in the amount of $944,425,951 to meet the needs of those affected. Why are these funds still not distributed to our Choctaw citizens? Many Choctaws are in need of money to help with the cost of living expenses of necessities. I am not against any of the progress being made by the Choctaw Nation or the construction being done. But I would just like to see as much manpower, energy, and money that is being put into construction be matched or exceeded by putting the same amount of money into our people and their needs here in the Choctaw Nation. I was asked, how much money do we get from the federal government and what is it for? We know that the Choctaw Nation was provided relief and resources by the U.S. Treasury Department to allow us to continue to meet the pandemic response needs. According to the U.S. Treasury, these funds will support immediate stabilization and for households and businesses in Indian country. So how are our tri tribal citizens being served? An elder told me that if we can't see it being done, then we don't know where the money goes. These funds were entrusted to the Choctaw Nation for the benefit and protection of our Choctaw citizens. I am aware that the Chief, Assistant Chief, Tribal Council, the tribe's lawyers and firms, construction companies, and others in administrative capacities continue to benefit financially. When will our Choctaw citizens directly benefit? I believe that it is time for you, our representatives for all Choctaw citizens, to stand up for us. Stop letting our tribal program workers deny these citizens who need help. When the majority of our tribal citizens do not qualify for existing programs, then it's time to give each Choctaw $2,000 or more directly. The new business item on today's agenda is to approve the expenditures for ARPA funding. If individual payments are not consistent with the majority of other tribes, then please increase the payments to $2,000 or more. It's time to quit acting like there isn't enough money to help our Choctaw tribal citizens and start helping them by putting the money where it is needed. Please make legislation to serve and protect our people by giving this Rescue Act funding and other profits directly to our people. Yako yeah, Key. Thank you, Ms. Ann Pilly. Mr. Isaac Sexton, is he present? Do I hear a motion to allow Mr. Isaac Sexton to address council? Make that motion. Second. Motion made and seconded. Mr. Sexton, would you post the podium, please? You got to vote. vote. Yeah, they can vote. Oh, I'm sorry. Vote. Oh, vote. Sorry. <laughs> Speaker Williston. Yes. Tony Ward. Yes. Eddie Bohannon. <clears throat> yes. Justin Cox. Yes. Ron Perry. Yes. Jennifer Woods. Yes. Jack Austin. Yes. Perry Thompson. Yes. James Drive. Yes. Anthony Dillard. Yes. Robert Carr. Yes. James Frazier. Yes. Hey, Mr. Sexton, would you approach the podium, please? You have 30 seconds to address council. I'll uh, record it. Three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my day today, trust me. Uh, hey. Today is a bad day for me, but anyway, uh, you have three minutes to address council. I'll record it. Secretary will advise you with when you have 30 seconds left. You may begin at your leisure. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, brothers and sisters, councilmen. And uh, we're here today to talk about the funeral burial expenses for the Choctaw people. We have Choctaw dying every day, and we have people that's having to pay all of us $2,500 to to pay the funeral bill off. A lot of them are on fixed income. They can't do this. They can't afford this. So we need to raise the cost up. Now, the cheapest funeral with a, with a chapel service or uh, in a, a family hour is $4,500. Now, Choctaw Nation pays twenty five. 
Now, $3,500, I think it is, is what we need to, to go ahead and pay this funeral for the Choctaw people. Because, like I said, they own a fixed income and they can't afford to pay anything else. And uh, just like here not too long ago, we had a body laying up there in the in Brown Funeral Home there in Atoka because the family couldn't come up with $3,000. And uh, so the family called and talked to my wife, Judy, here, and uh, they... Uh, she told me that they needed to, that they needed to contact uh, uh, Ted Rogers, and so they did, and they they got got this all done. But there's a lot of things here that need to be fixed. We talked about this here before, and so now we need to do something. Talk to people still dying; they still need help. So now we need to do something. And there was another program that we talked about. We had two meetings or three meetings with Jamie Dillard and. Clint Rogers, I'm going to let my wife talk about this now. Thank you. What we're advocating is now to the brochure that you've got in your hand. This is what is put out by the nation. Okay. I don't know if you've ever looked at them, if you've ever addressed uh -huh. these things in your in your centers, but you are the voices of, the, of our yeah. people. And in the center, you uh -huh. can get together and have presentations and go through this because this will alleviate some of this confusion because it's word by mouth. It's word by mouth. And over generations has come that Choctaw Nation will pay 2500 for everyone. And that's not true. And then it says that Choctaw Nation, uh, that it's everybody qualifies. And that's not true. Things that need to be clarified, you need it needs to be addressed. And you can do this through your senior citizen centers. Because when you put the word out there, it will go out and trickle out to the rest of the family members. What we're asking for is, yes, the things do need to be paid for. Thank you. Things do need to be, uh, the amount needs to be raised, but there's also a different change that has to come. That's not the answer. We're looking for a broader vision, and that vision's coming down the pike, but this is only the beginning, that we need to come together and be a meeting of the minds and of one strength and put a voice out. But we need you to stand up and pre present it in a way that they will see, not just say, hand out the brochures, but stand up and give voices talk it with it voices voices the more we voice it the more it will travel and then it will come to pass but we thank you for your time we thank you for this time thank you mr thank you. and mrs Sexton. appreciate it we have kristen franklin Is she present yes we have a motion for allow Ms. sexton i mean franklin to uh, address council i make that motion second Motion made, second. Vote. Speaker Williston? Yes. John Ford? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Yes. Delton Cox? Yes. Ron Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Harry Thompson? Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Diller? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. James Frazier? Yes. Ms. Franklin, would you post podium, please? You have three minutes to address the council. Our recording secretary will advise you again and uh, advise you when you have 30 seconds left. Thank you. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. Good. Halito, I am Kristen Jackson Franklin, great fifth great granddaughter of William Oakatree. Uh, my family originally lost our registration with this great nation in 1902 in the Dawes roles application. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with it. I'm currently an equal law intern, and I'm currently an advocate and intern for Indigenous Women Rising in California. And it is my passion and my purpose, not only to represent this nation, but all Indian nations and communities, because we need to save our children. We need to save our women. We, we've been through so much. And I say we because I am a descendant of this great nation. And I am humbled and honored to be back here. And just driving in here, I started crying because it just felt like home. I, I visited here as a child and I said, God, if you leave me, I'll go back. And I'm here. I'm asking that you review my petition for acceptance back into the tribe. I have submitted my documents to you electronically about a month ago. Um, I also cited a few cases and precedents that I'd like to use in my case consideration when you do submit this to the tribal lawyers. 
And more importantly, if you accept me back in or not, I'm still going to continue to fight for Indigenous people. I'm still going to continue to fight to bring our children back home. I'm still going to continue to fight to protect our women and children. I'm humbled and I'm honored and I'm thankful for the consideration. I'm thankful for the time and I'm just happy to be back here with this great nation. And I ask that you humbly accept my petition and just know that I'm here, standing here today, I'm honoring my ancestors. And I hope they could see me because I know that they'd be proud because I'm the one that came back. Thank you for your time and your consideration. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Franklin. We certainly thank you for your... We thank you for your passion for the Choctaw people and the Choctaw Nation as well as all the presenters here today. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your passion that you hold for your people and the Choctaw Nation. So thank you very much. Reports and committees. Yes, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to give a report on the, uh, like we had the last several months or the last year and a half on the CARES Act funding and now the uh, ARPA funds, the Electric Rescue Plant Act. Uh, we've been announcing that we were working on this plan for the last several months with the new stimulus bill that passed. Um, the council has been working diligently with the chief, Chief Batten, Assistant Chief Austin, and our administration. We've had a lot of feedback from our tribal members. I know I visit tribal members at our community center in our, and in our community. I know other district uh, councilmen do also. We've had feedback from telephone calls, emails, social media, uh, happy to say that the majority of our people were, were uh, pleased with uh, the way we handled the CARES funds last year. And it's, in many ways, we helped our tribal members. And I want you to know that we will continue to do that. Uh, the Choctaw Nation and our, this council has a heart to help our tribal people. Uh, we just have to go through the process to do it correctly. Uh, <clears throat> as far as the ARPA funds, I got some talking points I just want to uh, read off this morning. The Choctaw Nation received $944,425,951. That was the first disbursements of the ARPA, ARPA funds, fiscal relief funds. We received that in May. We're going to have a council bill today on the agenda to approve the distribution of these funds. The council bill will authorize expenditures into two main categories. The first is the COVID-19 tribal member relief fund and it represents 66% of the total funds received. That's $627,154,677. These funds will be used to directly impact our tribal members through food security, housing security, necessary living expenses, child care, internet, and technology access. The second category is the COVID-19 Response, Stabilization, and Recovery Fund. It represents 34% of the total funds, or $317,271,274. Uh, <clears throat> the COVID-19 COVID Response Stabilization Recovery Fund includes initiatives like expansion of our tribal services, public health safety enhancements throughout our reservation, and small business assistance and economic recovery. Both of these categories will directly or indirectly impact our tribal members. We're planning on spending a, a $41 million for a clinic in McAllister, which is needed badly, which will serve our people for the next 40 years. So not only will the direct payments and programs assist our tribal members, but the other monies that we spend are gonna direct, uh, impact our tribal members for, and our kids and grandkids. More information, including where to apply for the direct tribal membership member support programs, application dates, and total available assistance will be announced Monday, August 16th at approximately 10 a.m. Please follow our Facebook page with the social media handle Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. A message from Chief, Chief Batten will be posted that morning. Or visit www.choctawnation.com slash COVID relief at that time for more information. 
Tribal members with email addresses and cell phone numbers on file will also receive direct communications with updates related to the ARPA funds and program. Again, I'd just like to say that uh, your council and your administration, Chief Batty, Assistant Chief Austin, have a heart to serve our people. And I believe the programs that we're going to have available are going to be similar to the um, CARES Act funding from last year with some few changes, and it's going to really benefit our tribal members. That's my report, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Councilman. Do <coughs> business, Mr. Secretary. Council bills, Mr. Speaker. First of all, we have some uh, judge appointments. First one is please accept this as a submission for confirmation for the name of Mr. David Burns to, to fulfill the Choctaw Nation Tribal Court Judiciary position of Chief Justice for a term of three years to be completed in October 2024. Respectfully, Chief Gary Batten. Mr. Speaker, I make most we vote this appointment. Thank you. Motion by executive. Questions? Comments? Vote. Speaker Wilson? Yes. Tony Ward? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Delton Cox? Abstain. On Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Perry Thompson? Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. James Fraser? Yes. Mr. Speaker, we have another one. Please accept this as a submission for our confirmation the name of Mr. Warren Gocher to, to fulfill the Choctaw Nation District Court Judiciary position for a term of four years. This point will be as follows. Respectfully, Chief Gary Batten. Mr. Speaker, I make a motion with vote on this council bill. Second. Motion made and second. Questions, comments? Oh. Speaker Williston? Yes. Tony Ward? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Yes. Delton Cox? Yes. Ron Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Perry Thompson? Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. James Frazier? Yes. Okay, Mr. Speaker, Council Bill C. Approved business lease G09 1996 in favor of Bill Blatt on land held by the USA and Trust for the Choctaw and Chickasaw Nations in Pittsburgh County, Oklahoma. Mr. Speaker, I make a motion we vote on this lease. Second. Motion made and seconded. Questions, comments? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this land is in District 11. I'd like to kind of give a uh, the purpose or need of this council bill. This is to approve a business lease number G09 1996 in favor of Bill Black on land held by the USA and Trust for the Choctaw and Chickasaw Nations in Pittsburgh County, Oklahoma. The lease was negotiated as a direct lease on land located in the northeast diagonal half of Northwest 1 4th of Section 19, Township 6, North Range, 15 East. Pittsburgh County, containing 20 acres or less. It's the McAllister watershed out around the Tullawanda Lakes. Uh, the lease is for a three-year term and $200 a year. Mr. Black has been leasing the property for many years and helps control access to our property, helping to prevent trespassing. And <laughs> the Black family owns land adjacent to this track, and they have kept the property in good condition. Any further questions? Comment? Vote. Speaker Williston? Yes. Tony Ward? Yes. Yes. Delton Cox? Yes. Ron Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Harry Thompson? Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. James Frazier? Yes. Bill D. <clears throat> Approved recreational lease number G09 1983 in favor of Wade Bachelor on land held by the USA and Trust for the Choctaw and Chickasaw Nation in McCurtain County, Oklahoma. Mr. Speaker, I make a motion. We vote on this. 
second. Motion made and second. Questions, comments? Yes, Mr. Speaker. The purpose of this council bill is to approve recreational lease number G09-1983 to Wade Bachelor on land held by the USA and trust with the Choctaw and Chickasaw Nations in McCurtain County, Oklahoma. This lease was advertised for bid. Wade Bachelor presented the highest bid on the land located in the new island north of the Red River, also known as 1108 in lots 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 of Section 32 and all treated lands in Section 33, Township 10 South, Range 27 East, McCurtain County, Oklahoma, contains 545.83 acres, more or less. Appraisal value at $3,600. Uh, I've got a comment, a question. I should say, Chief, is that, is that a, a yearly fee? Term of three years. Uh, 3000 Yeah. For three years. I believe that's annual. Yeah, I sort of said that. It's yeah, annual. annual. Every year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Any further questions, comments? <laughs> Vote. Speaker Williston? Yes. Tony Ward? Yeah. Eddie Bohannon? Yes. Elton Cox? Yes. Ron Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Perry Thompson? Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. James Frazier? Yes. Council Bill E. Approve the application for the Tribal Broadband Connectivity Program grant. Mr. Speaker, I make a motion to vote on this grant. Second. Motion made and seconded. Questions? Comments? Yes, Mr. Speaker, the purpose of, of this bill is to approve, approve application for the National Telecommunications and Information Administration uh, competitive funding that will assist the nation in deployment of and access to broadband service on tribal lands. Uh, whereas the nation is eligible for funding to provide broadband infrastructure deployment, including a new infrastructure, replacing or upgrading existing infrastructure and equipment and extending existing infrastructure, and services with federal funds. The total federal budget is $65 million. This is a, a just an application. Uh, they feel strongly that we have a good shot at, at receiving these funds. And uh, it's not a guarantee, but uh, if we do receive these funds, it's really going to change uh, uh, the dynamics and everything in southeastern Oklahoma from connectivity and especially uh, in our rural areas to, to really help our youth, our kids and stuff that uh, – that have no internet service in the future. Thank you, Councilman. Any further questions, comment? I just would like to add, Speaker, that um, we that is very much needed in our rural areas where we don't have access to Wi-Fi. Um, so many areas in my rural area, District 6, don't have access. They have to go to um, the library, the school, or our community center. So this would be very beneficial if we are able to receive it. I agree. Uh, well, I live out in a dead zone. It's a hit and miss a lot of times. But anyway, any further questions, comments? Vote. Speaker Williston? Yes. Tony Ward? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Yes. Cox? Yes. Ron Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Perry Thompson? Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. James Frazier? Yes. Council Bill F approves the, the disposal of surplus capital assets. Mr. Speaker, I make a motion to vote on this. Council Bill. Second. Motion made. Second. Questions, comments? The purpose, Mr. Speaker, the purpose of this bill is the chalk donation has capital assets that are broken, obsolete, or have ex exceeded their useful life, or simply no longer have a use to the nation. This bill asks for the approval to dispose of vehicles, furniture, fixtures, or equipment with an original cost of 
$486,133.122 at a net book value of $1,097,348.35. Including, including all listed inventory. Okay. Mr. Speaker, I'd, I'd like to note that um, I know we had, we had brought up in discussion in the past about the, uh, the Van Hool tour buses that are our buses. Uh, and I see they're on the, on the surplus list and, and that uh, I, I think we requested some information to try and find out for sure what the charter cost versus the uh, running our own buses were. Uh, want to be sure, make sure everybody is aware that the buses were on this list. Thank you, Councilman, and uh, I certainly agree with you. Uh, I know information data was requested some time ago in com and to compare the the cost of leasing or chartering uh, buses to transport our children within our tribal camps, uh, transporting our seniors. Uh, but yet we have not received that data that was initially asked for. So uh, at this time I'd like to request to assist the chief to assure us that that data information will be given and where we can um, scrutinize it and uh, you know, make a good, sound, firm decision on whether the keeping or the selling of our tribal buses that uh, a lot of our seniors feel like um, that's stable for the Choctaw Nation, for the Choctaw people. Um, but again, we request that data and comparison information on the buses. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to add to, you know, when we transferred those buses from Commerce to uh, the other, you know, division as far as, because we talked about it being a service to our people. And I know, you know, in our discussion with the Mike's Tribal Council about not only the, the service to our tribal people, but, you know, if, if it's a bigger cost uh, for us to keep those buses, fine. But uh, the thing is, 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 you know, our seniors use those for a lot of trips. And I'd like to, you know, in requesting, you know, more data is, is how much did we spend on trips with our seniors uh, on those long trips, those four, five, six day trips, and also uh, how much have we spent on outside uh, busing for all of our ball camps and stuff. So, uh, you know, I'd like to request that too because, you know, even the bus drivers, and, and I, I would hear it, you know, with our seniors, I'm not saying, you know, all those bus companies, they have their own. Uh, health and service requirements of their drivers, but you know we do too as a as a tribe and and those bus drivers that we did have uh, had relationships not only with with those divisions within the Choctaw Nation, but with you know our seniors at, at our prospective districts. And, and to me, that means a lot too because we know that they're being very well taken care of on on these trips, and these kids are being taken care of too with transporting or transporting those kids to those ball camps. <laughs> Uh, with you know uh, our bus drivers and 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 even the ones that you know, we use them in the summer, uh, where a lot of trips are, are taken with summer youth camps, I'm sure we have drivers within the Choctaw Nation that that have CDL license that could uh, operate these buses. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I promised myself I would keep my mouth shut this time. I, uh, I'm not going to. Uh, I thought we've already discussed this to some degree already. Uh, I'm not sure when that was, a month or two ago. But uh, I'm not going to vote for this bill. I'll tell you. And that's the reason why. We've already discussed this. Someone didn't hear us. For that reason, I'm not going to vote for it. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. <clears throat> Speaker. Uh, you know, I think we need to take in consideration that uh, we've had asked for information, uh, but one thing we also need to look at is, is what are the condition of the buses? What does the maintenance cost us to upkeep them? How old they are? Uh, because it could possibly be more expensive to keep them than to do the leasing. We're going to get our buses for our kids and our seniors, 
uh, either way. But if we're going to look at it, we need to make sure we look at everything um, and, and weigh that decision at that time. I agree, Councilman. Mr. Speaker, uh, <laughs> just, just to let you know and all the other council know, I do have preliminary reports still waiting on some information from our data analyt analytics team, which is unbiased uh, view of all of our programs and gives us a very good look into it. Preliminary is going to be a much higher cost to retain our vehicles uh, versus contract out, but should have the rest of the information uh, I would expect into this week, maybe two weeks. Thank you, Assistant Chief. Any further questions, comments? A motion has been made and seconded. We vote the table it. No. Oh, no. Motion has been made. Okay. Oh. Williston? No. Tony Ward? No. Eddie Bohannon? No. Delta Cox? No. Ron Perry? No. Jennifer Woods? No. Jack Austin? No. Perry Thompson? No. James Dry? No. Anthony Dillard? No. Robert Carr? No. James Frazier? No. Council G, approved funding for an equity investment in a restaurant to be located in South Oklahoma. Mr. Speaker, I make a motion for relevance, Council Bill. Second. Motion made, seconded. Questions, comments? Mr. Speaker, the, the purpose of this Council Bill approves the funding uh, for a 50 50 equity investment uh, in a new restaurant in Atoka with a undisclosed partner at this time uh, due to NDAs. Uh, so at, at this present time, the uh, the projected ownership will be 50-50. So it's uh, the description of the bill. Okay. What is the amount? Uh, the total nation's amount will be $3 million. And the other partners will be $3 million as well for a total of six. Thank you. And as we had discussed this the other day, it was a, um, I believe it was a three year return on our investment. Is that correct? That's correct. And the other party was to invest their own money of the other half, correct? Correct. Correct. And over a hundred new jobs, I believe, as well as what it's, is that, is that right, Anthony? Thank you. A little over a hundred new jobs. hundred new jobs. And we're not, you know, funding, you know, it passed, not funding the whole project. So the other group has, has skin in the game. Right. Any further questions, comments? Vote. Speaker Williston? Yes. Tony Ward? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Delton Cox? Yes. Ron Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Perry Thompson? James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. Thanks, Frazier? Yes. Council Bill H. Enact the Claims and Investments Act of the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. The Speaker, I make a motion we vote on this Council Bill. Second that. Motion <laughs> made. Second questions, comments. Speaker, the purpose of this council bill is to act the claims of the Immunities Act of the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. This act provides limited waiver of sovereign immunity and provides certain rights and remedies to the tribal court for claims against the Choctaw Nation. That's the purpose. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Any further questions, comments? Speaker Williston? Yes. Tony Ward? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Yes. Delton Cox? Restrain. Ron Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Perry Thompson? Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. James Frazier? Yes. Yes, Bill, I approve the expenditure a fiscal relief fund money received from the United States Department of the Treasury under the American Rescue Plan Act. Mr. Speaker, I make a motion to vote on this council bill. 
Second. Motion made and second. Questions? Comment? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Got a good report earlier about this, but uh, this council bill approves the, spend, the expenditures of the Choctaw Nation's first portion of the fiscal relief <coughs> fund received from the federal government under the American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA. Choctaw Nation received $944,427,951. In the first portion of the ARPA distributions, this council bill approves the expenditures of these funds in the following amounts. 66% uh, or $627,154,677. These numbers are running, running together. Uh, of these funds will be allocated for the Tribal Member Relief Fund to provide assistance, including assistance with food security, housing security, necessary living expenses, child care, internet, and technology access. Uh, the second category is 34%, which is $317,271,274. Uh, these funds will be allocated as the Choctaw Nation COVID-19 Response Stabilization Recovery Fund for use as is allowed under ARPA, including but not limited to responding to the recovery, recovery from the COVID-19 <coughs> pandemic job protection, technology, infrastructure, public health, safety, supplies, small business, technical assistance. Uh, these funds will be administered uh, and approved by the COVID for COVID-19 related expenses. Again, uh, everybody, uh, the announcement from Chief Batten will be Monday, this coming Monday, August 16th at 10 a.m. on social media, Child Donation uh, local <coughs> Facebook page. Uh, Choco Nation website. You'll be on Bismick here in a couple of weeks. You can call your council members, uh, go to community centers uh, to start to see when you can apply for some of these funds. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to add, you know, on the it'll be a totally new application. So even the, the elderly on the food cards that uh, we did through the CARES funding, they'll have to reapply. And the ones that didn't, you know, for whatever reason, didn't apply uh, last time. Uh, they will be eligible, so everybody everybody will be eligible as well. And, and I would just like to commend uh, uh, our strategic development department, Tammy Gwynn and their group, for all the analytics that they put together. We just don't make these decisions just because we just think it's the best thing to do. There's analytics behind that. Uh, a lot of research went behind this as far as how to disperse this money uh, correctly, and not only that, but to make sure to see what's the best way that we can help our tribal members. And even with our two guest speakers earlier, I think a lot of the things that they were talking about are, you know, uh, we've addressed. And, and, and everybody, you know, when it comes out Monday, I encourage you to watch Cheap at, uh, at 10 o'clock. Uh, I guess it'll come out on Facebook. But uh, there was a lot of time and effort uh, that went in to uh, analyzing and looking at uh, the best way to uh, disperse these funds. And also, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to add to that also that uh, we do have extra help at, at our community centers and people need the help to uh, apply for those, uh, apply for this round here. And again, if you haven't updated or if you haven't got on the Chuckle Chuck portal, please do so and update that and uh, start getting ready to apply for that on there. I would also like to add, Speaker, and piggyback off what Tony said. I know uh, all the districts, they've been having trainings. Your CHR, CBSW field reps are already geared up and have lists of our tribal elders to help them to reapply that some of them don't, you know, understand, don't have the ability also to go through the charter portal. portal. So I commend all of those. I've seen them, heard them. They're ready. They're ready to roll out Monday. So just in case there was someone that did not apply for that food security before, we're encouraging them to apply this time, you know, and get get the benefits of that. But there are so many people available and ready uh, to assist everyone. Thank you, Council. Councilwoman. Uh, <laughs> is it correct that the food program will roll out on the 16th or Monday? Correct. All others will roll out on the first. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You know, it's this is an example of how blessed the Choctaw Nation is. Today's Choctaw Nation is. Uh, <clears throat> some years ago, some, you know, some may be able to remember that uh, the Choctaw Nation was not near what it is now. 
I remember when I was younger, all I knew was the commodity truck and the Indian clinic. But now that we've grown so much and we're blessed. And um, I remember my grandpa, and I was blessed to know him. He was born in 1998, 1898, I'm sorry, 1898, before statehood. And that's my grandmother. And they worked hard. They were hardworking people. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what life is about. That's what makes happiness is hard work. Hard times are hard times are hard times, but hard times make a person stronger. And that's why the Choctaw Nation is as strong as it is today. We've gone through hard times. Motion made, then seconded. Further questions, comments? Vote. Speaker Williston? Yes. Tony Ward? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Yes. Delta Cox? Yes. Ron Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Perry Thompson? Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. James Frazier? Yes. Council Bill J. Amend the Choctaw Nation Traffic Code. Mr. Speaker, I'm at the motion we vote on this Council Bill. Second. Motion oh, made. Second. Questions? Comments? Uh, Mr. Speaker, the purpose of this bill uh, proposes amendments to the existing Choctaw Nation Traffic <laughs> Code. The amendments proposed inserting sections 2 106, 2 107, and 70 100. The amendments create a public safety resolving fund and allows for a 50% of any fine and docket fee assessed to defendants resulting from traffic and other criminal violations to be paid to the agency that issued the citation and or made the arrest. The proposed amendment creating 17-100 adopts Oklahoma traffic violations that are not currently in the Choctaw Traffic Code. Thank you, Councilman. Any further questions, comments? Speaker, I'd like to make a comment that this this will just kind of further ensure the uh, cooperation of all the the uh, the other departments within our jurisdiction that that already uh, cooperates with us that uh, that they they're able to fund their activities to to maintain law and order in the tribal reservation boundaries. Are you referring to state, local, and municipal entities? Yes. Oh, I certainly agree. A good note. Um, uh, all law enforcement entities, when they issue a citation, that citation is basically a ticket. Within that violation, there, there's a fine assessed to that. And a portion of that fine goes to the uh, issuing agency. Then those dollars are distributed out to different entities to to basically fund law enforcement for for infrastructure, um, pretty much everything you can imagine. Just a small portion goes to every uh, little entity, several entities, with that citation dollar. But anyway, um, as the councilman has spoke, uh, that's what this traffic code is: is to uh, ensure that those other entities get that small portion of that citation dollar. Any further questions, comments? And again, that is very important, that small portion of that money to a lot of our rural uh, police and county departments. <clears throat> further questions, comments? Vote. Speaker Williston? Yes. Tony Ward? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Yes. Delton Cox? Yes. Vaughn Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Mary Thompson? Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. James Frazier? Yes. That's all council bills, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, the new business. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, and uh, remember uh, the guys uh, that served on this council for quite a bit. Uh, Mr. Delta Cox and Jack Austin Sr., I believe today will be their last meeting. Thank you, Councilman. I, um, I certainly agree for the uh, for the audience, the people that attended today. We have two council members that chose not to seek re-election 
And those representatives are from District 4, the Poto area, and District 7, the Pushmataha area. That being uh, the one that's present with us today, the District 4, Councilman Mr. Delton Cox. Uh, and Jack Lawson Sr., he's on our, he's here, but he's with uh, on our WebEx. Uh, they put many years, over 20 years, serving as Choctaw people. And um, I'd like to reiterate, but they both told me, you know, they've both been mentors. Uh, Delton Cox used to say that, you know, we can't serve our Choctaw people, we need to find another job. Councilman Jack Austin told me, where you going, Jack? <laughs> I'm going to serve my people. But he said it jokingly, but where he said it from the heart. I took it as he's saying it from the heart, and that's what he does. That's what they both have done. And I'm, myself, I am truly honored and blessed to have worked with Delton Cox, District 4, and to have worked with Jack Austin Sr., District 7. So I commend both of them for the service that they've given to all the people. And most of all, thank you for being our friend. I'd, I'd like to say uh, I, I appreciate that very much, the kind words you spoke about Matt Delton and I. And uh, it has been 20 years of service, and it was definitely time for me to, to move over and let a younger man have that position because I've, ha I've had a few health problems, and I need to take care of them. But I have enjoyed my time working with all you guys, and I appreciate you all. And uh, I know you're going to continue to do a good job, and the new councilman is coming in. I, I know they have the Choctaw people at home, or I, I don't feel like they've been elected if they hadn't been. But anyway, uh, I want to thank every each and every one of my council members uh, there. That uh, I appreciate you all and the uh, kind words you said. I've been a blessed man, but really, Thomas, uh, speaker uh, I've worked uh, 32 years for the Indian Health Service, and I worked 20 years for the uh, as councilman for District 7. And all that time, as most of that time, was spent for my own tribe, which was great. I couldn't ask for any better thing than that to serve the Choctaw people. And I appreciate you all, and thank you very much. You're welcome, Zach. We thank you most of all. Yes, we do. Mr. Speaker, it's been quite a growth in the last 20 years that I had to some small part in it. And, uh, the guy, he and I came on at the same time. It's kind of appropriate that both of us were leaving at the same time. I chose not to run this time. And uh, this has been a part of my life for so many years. I started out. Yes, when I was 17 years old and I was elected as an assistant uh, for the vice president of the Indian Club at Eastern. Uh, got involved with OIO and been involved with Native American Affairs ever since. This is who I am and what I am. Like I was telling James, well, you know, I'm going to still come around and make sure that the uh, <clears throat> You guys don't have to worry about the speaker. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of him too. So between the back now, we're going to stay around and watch uh, what it, uh, what goes on. It's all a part of a way of life. It's not just a job. It's never just a job. This is who we are. Each and every one of us. And uh, take care of our talk to our people. And we make money. We make a lot of money with our enterprises, but we make the money to provide services to our people. That's the primary reason we're making it. And just, again, keep that in mind whenever we start making these uh, expenditures. And we have to keep making money because we can't count on the federal government. You know what's happened to us in the past with the federal government. So with that, again, I'll... I'll be around, but uh, it's been a 
very interesting ride. It all is yours. Uh, I think it was just another chapter. Someone asked, what are you going to do now? I don't know. Well, whatever is going to be coming down the park. Of course, I'm trying to take care of my wife and family. Like always. But with that, again, I'll thank every one of you for putting up with me all this time. Well, we don't always agree. And at least each of us have a right to speak up when we say something. With that, again, I will shut up again. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. You know, yeah. Mr. Speaker, uh, just like to note, uh, he retired as the 285th job. <laughs> <laughs> 87 jobs, yeah. <laughs> Delton has an inside joke with Delton is that uh, he started work early at a young age and he worked for the U.S. government, BIA, and we just kind of keep a running tab as to how many jobs he's had. So what do you say, 288? Uh, <laughs> right. Mr. Speaker, I think we need to congratulate the, the winners of the uh, tribal elections uh, also that will be taking office next month. Joey Tom from District 7 and Jess uh, Henry from uh, District but I, I just like to say I was a new councilman two years ago and it was a privilege and honor to work with uh, Delta and Jack Austin uh, both of them's probably got over 50 years of service serving Native Americans in the Choctaw Nation and uh, a lot of history uh, a lot of knowledge that we're going to lose and I just want to wish them best, the best in their retirement I agree, thank you councilman uh, like you did mention that, uh, I think we have one council person elect in attendance, Mr. Jess Henry. He'll be representing District 4. Wave, wave your hand there, Jess. <laughs> okay, there he is. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to also thank you, and, and both of them as well. And, you know, losing, losing a lot of a piece of history to Choctaw Nation, especially, you know, with. Uh, Mr. Cox, I mean, his name's on the 1983 Constitution, so it was part of history, and it'll always be a part of history. Both of you gentlemen, I appreciate it so much. And also, in a new business, I'd like to uh, I know we had the, the opening of the Cultural Center in the past month. Uh, it's going well, and then the opening of the new casino, it's just it's amazing how many people are, are coming to that casino, and they've been selling out the rooms on the weekends, and just a lot to commend the, the staff and for all their hard work, and especially you know, even all the volunteers from the headquarters that are volunteering their time on the weekends to help park cars and bus tables and, and do all that to just like Delta said, to help keep the, you know, that's what keeps the services going is, is you, you know, the our commerce division and all the businesses that we have and just appreciate everybody stepping up and helping helping out uh, when it was needed with opening and everything. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. Speaker, I was just noticing Brian McLean back there in the back when I was still uh, treasurer for the tribe while he and I shared an office and uh, got to know one another. And even though uh, uh, you know, I went on a different route, uh, Brian's still around and still standing also like a lot of us. So he's also been in a lot of years working for Chalk Nation. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, we're speaking over here to our chapel. See one of our kids we had in Jones Academy a right, short time ago. She was uh, uh, one of our babysitters, one of her wife and I needed a babysitter. She was, uh, of course, and my oldest son was uh, probably seven, eight years old at that time, maybe even 10. Anyway, he's about Probably about 10 years older than her. So she was uh, one of our, our kids at one time. Hanging around the house, I think, eating our groceries, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. I wasn't going to go there, but I'm going to now, Delton. I do appreciate um, working with Jack Austin and Delton tremendously. I learned a lot from them and, and appreciate and respect them very much. But also, um, um, coming from a young girl that was raised by a Choctaw full-blood grandmother when she passed away, I found myself at Jones Academy. And I'm not a, you see the color of my skin, I'm not the darkest Choctaw. I had a very 
difficult beginning uh, time at Jones, but Delton Cox and his wife both saw something in me that I never saw in myself. And he encouraged me. He allowed me the, the most privileged job on campus at Jones was to babysit and eat all the food in their house that you wanted. And um, that was very, uh, it was my privilege to babysit for him while Dolores was going to college, but that they trusted me and they believed in me and they allowed me that job. It meant the world to me. Um, not only get to, to have that responsibility, but yes, when they asked me, you can eat anything you want and what do you like? And to go there and have a little bit of time away from the campus and enjoy ice cream and candy and cookies and all these treats. But the things he taught me all through the years, I wanted to be a truck driver, and he said, no, you're going to go to college, and I didn't want to go to college, but he believed in me enough to tell me to go to college and come back and work at Jones Academy, come back and work for the Choctaw people, and I have done that, you know, and I'm so privileged and thankful not only to serve on this council, but I thank Delton for seeing in me and believing in me and pushing me and letting me know that I was of value. I was somebody. And that's what I want to continue to do in this role. And I thank you forever, Delton, and love you. Amen. Thank you, Council. Councilwoman, that's, I certainly understand. I don't know who I'm going to have to pick on now. <laughs> I bought Delton some prunes one time we had a little trip he appreciated them <laughs> okay uh, any other new business yes Mr. Speaker one more thing, <laughs> one more thing. <laughs> um, I'd just like to announce that the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma uh, started a associate vaccine incentive program <clears throat> Uh, we know that we're trying to encourage everybody to get vaccinated because this COVID-19 is real. On August 9th, uh, Human Resources provided the following information to associates regarding the Associate Vaccine Incentive Program. Uh, again, we highly recommend it. Uh, in order to follow the rules of the CNO uh, vaccine program, we're offering a $300 cash incentive to all associates to verify their, their completed COVID-19 vaccination. To be able to receive $300, associates must, must meet two requirements, be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and provide human resources with proof of their completed COVID-19 vaccinations. <clears throat> As of August 9th, vaccinated associates are not required to wear masks at CNO facilities with one exception. Masks will continue to be required at healthcare facilities no matter the associate's vaccination status. Um, one more important note to the unvaccinated associates. Effective October 1st, any unvaccinated associate who must, who must isolate after being COVID-19 positive or in close contact will not be eligible to receive COVID-19 administrative pay and will be required to use annual leave, sick leave, or unpaid leave for their quarantine. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, under new business also, and this is a, uh, a request to Assistant Chief. Uh, I got a call the other day where a young lady what, uh, initially was on job for the day that she transferred in full-time or a part-time position at the casino based on she was told that there was that sign-on bonus. And uh, that's why she actually signed on. So, but she was told by the HR that she would not be getting that uh, sign-on bonus. So, either that there needs to be some clarification within the messaging of that. Um, if someone transfers from job for the day to a part-time position at the casino um, and they've been under the impression that they would receive a thousand dollar sign-on bonus uh, <clears throat> if you don't mind let's look into the messaging of that and see if it's actually understandable 
Okay. And I will forward you the name Thank to you. this person here after the meeting. Okay. Thank you. That's why I was going to ask. Any other new business? Uh, Mr. Speaker, just a minute. I, I had a man call me about the same thing. Not for a job for a day, but he had been promised the, the bonus from the, the Grant Casino. And they signed him up to work at the little casino there in Antlers Travel Plaza and uh, told him he would receive the bonus when he signed on. But now they're telling him that he can't get that because he don't work at Grant. But he's under the supervision of Grant people back there. So uh, he needs to check on that too, please. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, any other new business? Any old business? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Back in July, we tabled a council bill. I'm, I'm going to read it. Approval of the creation of the chalk donation of Oklahoma Tribal Conservation District. Mr. Speaker, I'm at the motion. We take, vote to take this off the table. A second. Motion made and second to remove the tabled conservation bill from from off the table. Motion made second. Questions? Comments? Yeah. Vote. Speaker Vote. Williston? Yeah. We're not voting on the bill, we're just voting to untable it. Okay. Speaker Williston? Yes. Tony Ward? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Yes. 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 Ron Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Perry Thompson? Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Farr? Yes. James Frazier? Yes. Tell about this figure. Now, now we have to vote on the bill. Motion. Yeah. And I'll approve the creation of Chalk Donation of Tribal Conservation District. Mr. Speaker, I make a motion we vote on this council bill. And I second it. Motion and made. Motion made and seconded. Questions, and comments? The purpose of this bill approves the creation of the Choctaw Nation Tribal Conservation District. The primary objective of the Tribal Conservation District is to support tribal efforts to, to provide for the utilization, protection, conservation, restoration of within the boundaries of the Choctaw Reservation and partnership efforts with the USDA and the NRCS. Tribal Conservation District will provide a local voice and leadership efforts to address natural resources, needs, and concerns by providing assistance to Choctaw land, loan, land owners in the conservation and wise use of land and natural resources. They also provide leadership for intertribal coordination between tribal governments, tribal natural resources managers, and coordinate assistance from NRCS and other federal, state, local, and private sources. A tribal conservation district provides an entity for U.S. Department of Agricultural and the tribe to work together. The USDA needs the tribal district's local leadership to help guide them in bringing the needed programs in the community. Thank you, Councilperson. Any further questions, comments? Vote. Speaker Wilson? Yes. Tony Ward? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Yes. Kelton Cox? Yes. Vaughn Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Yes. Perry Thompson? Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. James Frazier? Yes. Okay, do I hear a motion for adjournment? I'll make motion. Second. Motion made second. Questions, comments? My comments to the crowd is thank you for coming. Um, Certainly appreciate it. We certainly appreciate the information that the presenters have given us today. Um, and again, thank you for uh, being proud of your nation and proud of your people. So with that, vote. Speaker Williston? Yes. Tony Ward? Yes. Eddie Bohannon? Yes. Kelton Cox? Yes. Ron Perry? Yes. Jennifer Woods? Yes. Jack Austin? Perry Thompson? Yes. Yes. James Dry? Yes. Anthony Dillard? Yes. Robert Carr? Yes. James Frazier? Yes. Stand for closing prayer, please.
Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time, for being with us as we conduct this business, Lord. And Father, I just ask for traveling grace as we go our separate ways and back to our communities and areas, Lord, that we come from. And Father, I just lift up Delton Cox and, and um, Jack Austin, Lord, be with them. Put your protection upon them and their health and guide them and lead them, Lord. And, and just we thank you so much. We're so blessed, Father, in so many ways and to be allowed the privileges that we have. We just know that all good things come from you, Lord, and we always are grateful in our hearts and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.